Hi, my name is Kate DiCamello. I'm talking to you today about my new novel, The Magician's Elephant, which is coming out from Candlewick in fall of 2009. And the story started for me in, I'm thinking about dates, uh, June of 2007, when I was in New York City, and I was sitting in a hotel lobby waiting to meet somebody, um, actually, uh, somebody from Candlewick Press. There you go. Um, and uh, as I sat there, I was staring out at Madison Avenue, and um, no matter where I go, I always have a notebook with me. So I um, happily had a notebook because I was sitting there looking out at Madison Avenue, waiting for this person when um, this idea kind of like literally fell in my lap. Um, uh, the words of a story um, about a magician who uh, was tired of performing cheap magic and wanted to do real magic, didn't want to do tricks, wanted to perform real magic for once in his career. And um, that's where the story started for me. And I wrote down this bit about the magician and I discovered that there was more. There was an elephant and there was a boy and there was a girl. And so when I got home, I took the notebook and I um, started to write and there was just this um, story that kept on telling itself and um, I wrote it. When you write, um, you find out that you have themes even though you didn't really know that you had themes because people point out to you, look, here are the themes in your book. And now that I've written, this is my um, fifth novel, um, I can see that the same themes keep on showing up without me really intending for them to. But um, The Magician's Elephant um, deals with some of the same uh, themes that um, Despero does and Edward Tulane and Because of Winn-Dixie and Tiger Rising. There's um, abandonment, there's hope, there's um, the power of love, the power of um, believing, um, there's redemption, um, and there's some tragedy too. So all those things um, that have popped up in previous novels have popped up here, and if it doesn't um, surprise the, the critics, it certainly surprises me to see that the same themes keep on showing up. Um, I grew up in Central Florida in a small town called Claremont. Um, that was, when I was growing up, was a citrus farming community, so uh, it was um, isolated, um, and the biggest town was Orlando, which is about 30 miles west of Claremont, but mostly um, we stayed in Claremont, and fortunately I had a mother that um, very much believed in putting books in my hands. Uh, not only bought books for me, but took me to the library, um, Cooper Memorial Public Library, and I was greeted there by librarians who uh, put more books in my hands. and. Um, let me read anything that I wanted to read. And um, also uh, at Claremont Elementary, the school library there was another uh, library that I made my way through. Um, and just I just kind of read my way through childhood. Um, you know, it's funny because a lot of people will say, um, I wish you wouldn't put dark things in um, books for kids. And uh, I always say that um, any kid who has to walk out the door and get on the school bus every morning knows how hard life can be. And so they should have stories that reflect um, what the world is like, which is it's a difficult place and it's a beautiful place. And I think that they deserve stories that present the world in all of its complexity. The Magician's Elephant um, has a lot of things in it that um, a lot of good things happen and a lot of bad things happen. Um, and hopefully it's the kind of book that whether uh, a child reads it or an adult reads it or an adult reads it to a child, um, that will provoke the kind of response of um, this is the way life is. It's um, difficult, uh, but it's also wonderful. It can be ugly, but it's also beautiful. Um, and I hope that um, when people read it, they feel like somebody is telling them the truth and that that truth then makes them feel 
hopeful. So um, that's the kind of book that I like to read. I'm hoping that's the kind of book that I've written. I'm Katie Camello. I'm reading from my new novel, which will be published in fall of 2009 from Candlelit Press, called uh, The Magician's Elephant, Chapter One. At the end of the century before last, in the market square of the city of Baltice, there stood a boy with a hat on his head and a coin in his hand. The boy's name was Peter Augustus Duchin, and the coin which he held did not belong to him, but was instead the property of his guardian, an old soldier named Vilna Lutz, who had sent the boy to the market for fish and bread. That day, in the market square, in the midst of the entirely unremarkable and absolutely ordinary stalls of the fishmongers and cloth merchants and bakers and silversmiths, there had appeared, without warning or fanfare, the red tent of a fortune teller. Attached to the fortune teller's tent was a piece of paper, and pinned upon the paper, in a cramped and unapologetic hand, were these words, the most profound and difficult questions that could possibly be posed by the human mind or heart will be answered within for the price of one florit. The audacity of this statement, the dizzying promise of it, stopped Peter in his tracks. He read the small sign once and then again. He looked down at the coin, the single florit in his hand. But I cannot do it, he said to himself. Truly, I cannot. For if I do, Vilna Lutz will ask where the money has gone, and I will have to lie, and it is a very dishonorable thing to lie. He put the coin in his pocket. He took the soldier's hat off his head and then put it back on. He stepped away from the sign and came back to it and stood considering again the outrageous and wonderful words. But I must know, he said at last. He took the floret from his pocket. I want to know the truth, and so I will do it but I will not lie about it, and in that way, I will remain at least partly honorable. With these words, Peter stepped into the tent and handed the fortune teller the coin. And she, without even looking at him, said, one florit will buy you one answer and only one. Do you understand? Yes, said Peter. He stood in the small patch of light, making its sullen way through the open flap of the tent. He let the fortune teller take his hand. She examined it closely, moving her eyes back and forth and back and forth, as if there were a whole host of very small words inscribed there, an entire book about Peter Augustus Duchin composed atop his palm. Huh, she said at last. She dropped his hand and squinted up at his face. But of course, you are just a boy. I am 10 years old, said Peter. He took the hat from his head and stood in straight and tall as he was able. And I am training to become a soldier, brave and true. But it does not matter how old I am. You took the floor, so now you must give me my answer. A soldier, brave and true, said the fortune teller. She laughed and spat on the ground. Very well, soldier, brave and true. If you say it is so, then it is so. Ask me your question. Peter felt a small stab of fear. What if, after all this time, he could not bear the truth? What if he did not really want to know? Speak, said the fortune teller, ask. My parents, said Peter. That is your question, said the fortune teller. They are dead. Peter's hands trembled. That is not my question, he said. I know that already. You must tell me something that I do not know. You must tell me of another. You must tell me... The fortune teller narrowed her eyes. Ah, she said, her, your sister, that is your question? Very well, she lives. Peter's heart seized upon the words, she lives, she lives. No, please, said Peter, he closed his eyes, he concentrated. If she lives, then I must find her. So my question is, how do I make my way there to where she is? He kept his eyes closed, he waited. The elephant, said the fortune teller. What, he said. He opened his eyes, certain that he had misunderstood. You must follow the elephant, said the fortune teller. She will lead you there. Peter's heart, which had risen up high inside of him, now sank slowly back to its normal resting place. He put his hat on his head. You are having fun with me, he said. There are no elephants here. Just as you say, said the fortune teller. That is surely the truth, at least for now. 
but perhaps you have not noticed. The truth is forever changing. She winked at him. Wait a while, she said. You will see.